You're uncomfortable in that chair, Lorenzo. Do you want another chair? No, no, I'm all right. Yeah, okay. Actually, mm. yeah. We got that one from Graham Norton. Yeah. <laughs> we <did the> <laughs> 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 Please like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. And if I say one thing at all yeah. about the electric cab, or yeah. the new the new LEVC cab. Not so new anymore, is it? Not so new. But I, mean, I remember the first time I saw it, and then, then getting in yours yesterday as well was the same thing. It is lovely. How it's old the, is it now? What's the, what was the first uh, one? It'll be six years. So uh, January 2018, the first ones came out on the... Um, on the roads, yeah. And what's the highest mileage you've seen on one so far? Oh, interesting, um, David. Question. Do you know what? Someone asked me that a couple of days ago. Um, I think I've heard of, not seen, probably about 270-odd. Really? That's not bad. Anything with it? Yeah. Really, though? No. That's not well, bad. That's excellent. Well, she had four chassis and three yeah. 15 inches. <laughs> Trickers, bro. Yeah. Are they, yes, they going to uh, say that's propaganda? That true, oh, really? Yeah. I mean, really, that's that's. Yeah, so that's oh. that's quite big miles, uh, and that's uh, a guy up in Scotland, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, he's not had, um, fr- from what I understand, he's not ma- had many problems whatsoever. Um, you know, and his thing was driving it right, driving it carefully. You think there's some truth in that? I I would have thought there was, but I've been shot down by a few people. Oh, well, I, no, think I think there is. I think there's some truth in it. Yeah, I think wh- whatever you buy, whatever vehicle it is. Um, you know, you drive it carefully, you look after it, you service it, you know, any little bits and pieces that come up, you sort out. Um, yeah. And that cab will, 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 will last. Uh, cab, car, whatever it is. Well, I understand that part, obviously, with any car, that if you drive it better and you look after it, it will maintain. But then if you're driving something within what would con- be considered to be normal usage and it's braking, so it's kind of, is that's what's the, the quirk, isn't it? People feel that it shouldn't break within new, normal usage. They're not really driving it hard although me and dave don't quite think that they aren't driving it hard they I don't are know. some some people must be driving it hard some, some and but that's not always it. i mean i could go out tomorrow and be driving it in my slippers and something and go but that's the same with any vehicle though you could buy mm. a, a 150 grand merc or something couldn't you top of the range and something could go on it yeah you see rolls royces on the back of trucks yeah it's just it's just looking after that vehicle um if you done the moles and the work that you guys do in a normal car i think you would get a lot more can we talk about warranty yeah what's happening with the warranty warranties is it, is it, is it going up in price uh, the warranty has gone up in price um cost of parts and and things like that obviously influence but um it's uh, it's an outside company um you know, is, is, we already know everything about mm. the warranty. I think you've already done a kind of yeah, thing yeah, on it's it popular and <coughs> as well. We've got loads of people talking about it, didn't we? I mean, what was the conclusion? The, don't don't get one, it was wasn't the, it? Don't yeah, get well, one. Well, I well, think if it gets so expensive, then in the end, you might just put the money aside yourself anyway. What you know? I didn't say on that podcast is, I think we, the LEVC actually sport us a little bit with that warranty it's very comprehensive it covered so much and it was a long warranty we'd never had before so we got used to five years is a long time any uh business and if you're covered for everything over five years you get addicted to being covered don't you and then all of a sudden you're outside warranty you're coming up to renewing and things have gone up everything's changed in mm-hmm. five years, and all of a sudden you've got to pay for it yourself, and it's like <gasps> it's so expensive. Then you realise what they covered, which was huge. I think even like gallon of oil has gone up like three times. Hasn't yeah. It? yeah, so so much has gone up in price. Um, like you say, the oils, uh, antifreeze. You know, it's not cheap stuff. You can't just go and buy a gallon for like a fiver. It's all no. gone up. Everything's quite yeah. expensive. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Look again. The, the warranty's there. If anything goes wrong, we'll 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 you know bring it in. We'll we'll sort it out. That's what we're there for. What about salaries? Salaries Have they gone up? Uh, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> <laughs> <Cut>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No comments to that one. <laughs> Still got to get paid. Yeah. yeah. No, but I have to say though, overall, and I've had mine two and a half years, and I, I rented it from Paul, didn't I? First of all, a few years mm. ago, and yeah. uh, I do like them. Yeah. I have to say overall, and I've had, I'm going to find some wood now. I've, so MDF, I've right? had very little. Yeah. Now, one thing I would moan about if I was moaning, I had that we know it rebooted the, the, the screen. It kept yeah. going on and off. And I'm not moaning about that because that could go. But I was, you know, I was told, yeah, can you, you have to take a picture of it when it's doing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said. Now, that means ignition on, usually driving, 
You got to right. take a photo. Yeah, yeah, and I found that odd. Yeah, that like was that. an odd. That was an odd statement. I did get it. Do you know, how I got it. I actually had my it was my ne- nephew in, sitting behind me when he was messing around with the camera, and I managed to get a video of it happening. Yeah, but that's an odd thing to say to a driver. They right. should have said, "Get your nephew in the back yeah. of the cab yeah. to take a picture." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you it. know. Uh, but yeah, well, it's, what it's was difficult. that? How can they but find out? Otherwise, they can't. Yeah, can't it's, see it's the difficult problem. because you do get these little glitches. Look, there's a lot of software in this vehicle. There's a lot of computers on this uh, in the cab. Um, you know, it's, I, I always kind of liken it to uh, an iPhone. Every now and then That's it needs an update. That's what I do. Every now and then it needs turning off and switching back on. Every now and then it freezes. Um, you know, I, I've got a car with a computer screen and everything, and that freezes. That mm. starts searching. That starts loading. Sometimes uh, is that so? We're taking the lead off the battery. Is that like uh, giving it a reboot? So I don't think you particularly like people doing that, do you? Well, no. The only reason not to take the um, uh, the battery lead off the battery is that you're wiping the memory so you're just clearing everything so when oh. you do bring it in you can't we, plug, we plug the computer in and we can't see but what's if wrong you're with stuck it. if you're stuck somewhere and it's stuck in yeah, yeah and that happened to me in slow square a few years ago yeah, yeah. so w- the early ones um you know uh, did have um a kind of software glitch in it um they've rectified that i don't hear that going on anymore the 10 hardly ever right yeah. hardly ever use a 10 mil yeah once in the last three or four months I've used a what? driver 10 mil 10 mil spanner yeah. everyone oh. knows this they, for, this the, for the batteries a, yeah this is a thing that you used to do to reset the vehicle it's a bit of a cheat mm. so I used to quite like it because drivers used to ring me up broken down and I'd tell them what to do and and it'd be like heaven for me because normally with the old diesels there'd be recovery it'd be recovery recovery yeah. recovery a couple of nights you'd get you know on a big fleet but with the LEVC, it was like I would just do this, this, and this. Leave the boot open, boom, and you'd be, and there'd be away, and I would have no breakdown bills. Yep. Um, now it's different reset. It's just turn it off, turn it on again, and off you go. Just leave it five minutes, and off, yeah. off you go. Um, but it's not, it's not as bad as it was. Software updates get better and better and better. That, that, that I will say. Do they still have London cab recovery? There is a London cab, couple of different recovery firms. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that specialise in taxi, which are yeah. much better than. The national stuff. Yeah, um, come and get you. Yeah, 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 I think. So the ten mi- So the funny thing about the battery, though, isn't it? When usually electronics, when you disconnect what would be considered the main battery, mm. there's usually a little single cell battery that would keep, like, your clock running and things like that. So that's your 12-volt battery is what Paul's talking about. Yeah. Is that... It, it, it oh, it's only a little battery. It's a 12-volt battery. Oh, it's a car battery. Car battery. Yep. That's it. Not it's the main big battery. Yeah. 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 Um, and without that, there's no other battery. There's no. You've got your main HV battery. HV battery, which runs the vehicle. High voltage. High voltage battery. Oh, okay, of course. So yeah, the whole thing's electric, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. I understand. So that doesn't maintain some sort of power to the electronics to keep sort of memory cells going. Um, it, it, so <laughs> they both kind of do different jobs. So that 12 volt is going to keep certain bits going, right. um, and the, the HV battery does some other bits. I'm I'm not that. Completely up on exactly what it, mm. it is. So you know, keeping so it alive or not? I think the H, the HV battery runs the vehicle. The small battery runs all the ancillaries. Time goes on and the, the battery gets old. Obviously, it's getting old. Then the the main big battery. If that's no longer any say it's any good, it's barely any good. Can you just keep going with it, or you ain't got to go and spend this fortunes to replace it? Have you? What I've kind of seen and vehicles of. The first one's the 18 plates. We've, there's a handful of 67 plates. And where I've had them in part exchange, when we resell them, you know, actually the batteries are standing up pretty well. They are. You know, um, are. You've, you've got a few 18 plates, haven't you? More than a few. So, you know, so they seem They're to good. be standing up well. Yeah. So as long as you're going through the cycles of charging, depleting, you know, charging again, slow charge, fast charge, all of that sort of thing. It's just maintaining that battery, using it. Um, you could carry on without the battery, but to be honest, that just defeats the object. You're not no, going to make the same thing. Well, what I'm asking mm. is because as they get older, and you're only allowed at the moment to keep it 15 years. You've got one year left, say that in the future, you've got one year left, and the battery's defunct. You're not going to go and spend 10, 15, yeah. 20 grand on a battery for one year, are you? Yeah, so right so basically, it's gone. But could you, could you basically drive it if the battery was no good? Um, on question. the petrol engine, yeah, just keep driving. You know, the engine. You, know, you need a level of charge in the battery. 
You would, it would need to be absolutely. It, yeah. But it could be de- greatly depleted from when it was new. You know, it'd be like your iPhone. You know, it goes down, doesn't it? As yeah. soon as you get it, you're watching yeah. the percentage go I mean, down. You've just got it plugged in all the time. But, yeah. Um, but you do need a level of, of, of charging there. And I noticed you said there about rapid charge, because I, I mean, I'm mainly charge at home. Should I charge rapid every so often? So, again, I think, uh, again, I don't take this as gospel, but yeah, it's you know, just kind of charging it in different ways. So, fast charging, slow charging, it all kind of. You know, it's good for the battery life. You think, yeah, maybe? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Degradation is the word. If you left the vehicle sort of sitting for six months, that wouldn't be good for it. My neighbour's got a hybrid car, and she's never charged it since she's had it. She's a seventeen <laughs> plate. She never charged it. She's not got a charger at home. She never charged it. But she's never been anywhere then, obviously. No, she uses it's petrol. Just, yeah, just drives it. Oh, petrol, I get you. It's a hybrid, but yeah. they're all there's all different types of hybrid cars. Yeah. Like, you know, so the hybrids will then charge the battery. Yeah. There's some of them, yeah. That's self charging, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not one of the, it's not one of them ones. It's, it's a plug in hybrid, isn't it? But I remember when it first came out, and everyone was like, "Ah, oh, the charging, the the range is rubbish," and blah 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 blah. And I'm thinking to myself, "But it's a hybrid. What are we worried about the range for?" Mm. Yeah, no, we haven't got. It, it's how got, does it compare to other hybrid sort of like so similar? So like, hi- hybrid is a, t- a different. It, this is a long range extender. So the engine. Charges the battery. You're not driving on sorry, engine. Sorry, sorry. The engine keep um, tops it. Yeah, tops, tops up it. the battery, yeah, yeah. and that's how the vehicle is being driven by the electric motors. So it's always being driven by electric, but the Correct, the yeah. engine is actually not driving the car. It's actually powering the battery. It's maintaining the battery at a certain level yeah. so that you can keep moving and keep driving. So as mm-hmm. long as you've got fuel in the car, you can you can just keep going um, in there. So hybrid is basically you go over thirty miles an hour, for example. Mm. Then your engine kicks in, right. and is driving the vehicle. Yeah, that that's, that's kind a of s- different form of hybrid. Isn't it? Called a mild hybrid, or something. That's a hybrid. You've got mild hybrids that kind of do a different job again. Right, keep the emissions <laughs> down. Right, then you have got plug-in hybrid. Right, that's so is a pl- ours is a plug-in hybrid. No, it's not no. hybrid whatsoever. It's a uh, long-range extender. So it's a different con. But on the V five, it says hybrid. Yeah, it does. It does. I yeah. think that's more about the DVLA categorising. Is it? Right, you know, right, how, right. They, okay. how they can categorise it. Yeah, it's yeah. always yeah. this strange c- discussion about what kind of vehicle it is. <coughs> it's yeah. like, the, do you remember the first BMW... Um, I5 or something? I3. No, I3, I3, yeah. The first ones, exactly the same. Yeah, it was the same setup. And the most people that review them cars want the original ones because they ain't worried about the battery expiring because they know they've always got a backup. The infrastructure yep. it's not there it's still not there in london still really not here do you know what i mean yeah so, so what would you drive then you, you still drive a cab i still no. if i drive a cab i drive one of paul's right okay. so i yeah. would drive the electric one the last cab i drove was your electric one mm. right so and i thought it was wonderful mm. this is a brand new job in, in in that cab in an electric cab it, it's a new job to what would have been yeah. it'll be like being a coal miner and then being an office worker. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's yeah. like, well, you know, we've just, I've been down the mines mm. and this is lovely. I don't want to go back. No. And this is it. I've, you know, I've been selling cabs for 25 years um, and selling fairways, TX ones, twos, and fours. Yeah. You know, and this is obviously, as you know, as far, by far the best we've ever, mm. we've ever had. But Dave, you haven't done a proper shift in a, in a TX at all, have you? No, no. Well, 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 last time I drove a TX4, Johnny O said I looked like a circus bear because it's so big. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't stop laughing. Uh, okay, so no, so I haven't got back. One. I haven't got one. Yeah, I, but I haven't got back in it since. No. I didn't like them. No, they're lovely and they're great. But once you compare it, so what would happen is you do a day's shift, <clears throat> and I used to go home and stand on my balcony and have a gin and tonic, and you'd be vibrating. Still, yeah, yeah, you would be vibrating, and you you can feel your body just rattling. You've just done your job, and the, the, it's in you, like. And then you Are go you out sure in an electric that was cab. The cab? <coughs> well, it was the yeah. You know. <laughs> it's just warm <laughs> air wafting around, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is a real different state to be in, and you don't realise when you've been driving in a vehicle that's rattling all the time that you're you're kind of. I imagine it ain't that great for your bones, mm, mm. and then uh, and the same as a passenger, which I've been a passenger in the LEVC one quite a lot, and. I remember thinking, wow, this is um, a completely different experience. You get out unshaken. There's an unseen stress and um, uncomfortableness that you didn't realise was there until you take it away and then you're in something that's not doing it and you suddenly realise, wow, that was 
really pleasant. Mm. You get out now and you're fine. It's more like a car. It's more like a little SUV. Like mm-hmm. we, I, I, I did a um, when, a few years ago when it first came out. I did a review with a car guy that uh, was quite famous on YouTube, and he was saying it feels like a little eye pace. That's what he felt like he was driving an eye pace Jag. Mm. He liked. He really liked it. Mm. I don't know whether he was saying that for the camera. Or what, for what's the, the width of it? Same as a TX4, isn't it? Oh. Mirror to mirror, it's yeah. the same as a TX4. Yeah. I, I don't remember the exact measurements, yeah. but Six mirror to mirror, it's feet, the... I think it was. Yeah, because that's why yeah. the wing mirrors are a bit small, because mm. they wanted to keep the same width. Six six is width gaps, isn't it? And I yeah. think you had about goes through Albert. F- three inches either side. Goes through Albert Bridge, you guess? Yeah, but if a traffic cop was to measure, he would measure the wing mirrors. Yeah, uh, he wouldn't. Yeah, he yeah. wouldn't. He wouldn't. Even though you said, "Oh, well, the bollards go under me mirrors." It, they uh, now the vehicle is oh, as wide you, as the mirrors, and that that's, would get you a nick. That's, that's why it? them ones are like snub nose mirrors, if you like, and that is to bring because that yeah, yeah, get you nicked. If you went through a six foot six and your mirrors are overhanging in bollards, and a traffic cop was to see you, he could measure nick you for going through it. I did not know that. I've not told you. I used to be a truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> you never said that before. I didn't know. I always say. <laughs> so, what, Dave, though, on that one, on a truck uh, driver, yeah. uh, you got electronic mirrors that I'm imagining you press a button and they both fold in. No, they, they don't fold all the way in. No, they're, they're moved. They'll be electronic. They're moved like you Well, if you go back fold. to my old dad driving his old Bedford, he'd lean over to, to one, one side and just rip it in like that. And then his side there, you, you, you know, he's well, got a measured mirror. Now you've got electric, electric mirrors to put down. Years ago, you never had nothing to put down. No air con, no nothing. It was no, like no. horrendous in trucks. Mm. But, uh, Did you drive trucks when there was no power steering? How old do you think I am? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I drove a Scammel. It was a 1973 Scammel. 3 old Scammel. Tip so it was. didn't have power steering? Uh, it, no, not power steering. No. It no. Was, right, yeah, but it was odd. But it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. As long as you were moving. Just kept As long as you were moving. Keep moving. It turned. You, you try and turn it on, on standing still, you wouldn't do it. It'd mm. be like Popeye. This is how luxury things have gone very quickly. Yeah, mm. I'm kind of pre-power steering. Mm. I never had power steering on anything no. that I was driving when I was first started driving. The heaviest car I had for steering was an XR2. <laughs> Yeah, and, that, that, and I'll tell you what, that was so hard to park. What was your but first car, Dean? I'm not going to know, because that is Flash, first uh, of all, right? That's not your it, first that, car. You, that was, that was Rachel's. That was my wife's car. I had an XR3. <laughs> you had an XR2. I had an XR3. In the 80s. I had an XR3. Yeah. Yeah. I had not the I. I had just the XR3. Okay. Uh, twin cam. Oh, that I wasn't my first car. Convertible, right? And the, the insurance was four times more than what I paid for the car. Well, they were the days. So there we go. I had RS2000. What was your first car? Yeah. Serious? He's no. trumped us. No. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first oh, car? I was going to say, Jesus. What was your first car? I had a uh, Mark 1 uh, Golf. Lovely. You, you better leave now. Oh, Mark 1 <laughs> Golf. That's a That's lovely nice. car. In yeah. Burgundy. See, but, my yeah. first car was a Capri, though, before that. Okay. How could you be the f- what are you talking about? Why are you 17 and you had a Capri? I had a Capri, yeah. It was, it's the only registration in any vehicle I can remember. YPE 68T. It was, it was what, Don't yeah, tell me it was a three litre Capri. What no, Capri it was it? No, it was a 1600. Yeah, I tell you what, it was a classic, my, my it was so beige, 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 beige with a brown vinyl roof and brown check seats. How much <laughs> of the insurance for you on a 1600 even then, the Capri? I don't been? remember. I don't remember then. This is like 1982, 83. I don't remember. My, mine was, I had a Terracotta Mark II Escort. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that was a V-Reg. Terracotta. V-Reg. Yeah. Well, I, I have to. T- mine was an R- a Mark II Escort with the RS2000 oh, badges. Well, it was yeah. an RS2000 looking like, wasn't it? Uh huh. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, it was all painted up to look like an RS2000. Yeah, no it was, it was, I think it was probably even an 1100 if it was. Um, we Did it have a fifth gear? Oh, I didn't have a fifth gear. No fifth gear. No fifth gear. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Four gears. Can you imagine some of the people watching this now thinking, four gears? Manual. Well, most are probably Bad, no gears, aren't they now? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's another thing with that, with it going back to uh, the LEVC, that, that, the little dumpy stick. You don't yes. like it? I like it. No, I like it. There's not a lot about it. I don't like to be honest, if I'm honest. There's yeah. not a lot. I don't. Mm. I, don't I, I yeah. wouldn't swap it. When it goes, it's a beautiful cat. Yeah. And this yeah. is the thing. Like oh. A lot of people complain about it because it's problems, but... When it's running, it's a lovely cab. It was the best yeah. by far. So, so, so many people have said it's the best cab I've ever had. Yeah. You know, that have been in the trade for many years. Mm. Like, but, there's, but there's a lot of people out there that yeah. haven't had any problems. Oh, I know. You know, we no, only hear. You hear all the. the how, how many are on the road then at the moment? In uh, there's over 7,000. 7,000. So we've overtaken the majority of the. Yeah, you've got this major share of the market and you've still got, a li- you've got 50% to go, really. There's 14,000 yeah. cab drivers at the moment. Yeah. Possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you also hope, like we do, to see the market grow a little bit to get back up to old days of twenty thousand, twenty six thousand. Yeah, absolutely. Taxes. Yeah. Again, the knowledge you, you guys are doing a kind of great job. I feel yeah. there's not many of you guys around at the more uh, at the moment, is there? 
what, so what this actually occurs to me now is because LEVC and all the garages, they have a very, very big vested interest and uh, people like to complain about people who've got vested interests like I have. We all have a vested interest mm. in this business. For you, it's absolutely crucial that there are new bodies coming through to p- go into new cabs. Same for the rental market. Mm. How uh, many have you sold there in the UK? Um, UK, uh, yeah, I think we're probably touching eight maybe, roughly. 8,000 roughly. Okay, uh, so there's not a massive market outside of London? No, they're grow- it's growing outside of London. Um, you know, it's, um, uh, it's just getting them out there. Uh, obviously, it's completely different to, to, to London, isn't it? You know, mm. I'd say mm. Scotland is probably the closest to, to London um, in terms of, you know. Man- sure. Manchester's cabs, I mean, I spoke about it on the other podcast. Yeah. They've got the oldest cabs kicking around. I saw one LEVC cab because yeah. they can keep them for as long as they want, can't they? No, there is an age limit in, is there, in what's, Manchester what's as well, limit, which yeah? I think is, uh, again, it's um, it's 12 to 15 years. Is I, it? I can't remember. They kind of gave them a little bit extra time. Mm. Did they? To, to, to kind of change Because didn't there used over. to be an LEVC in Manchester? Um, yeah, there was, yeah. I remember when I first got out, I was looking at cabs for sale. And there was cabs for sale in the regions that seemed to be loads cheaper than what they were in London. And I was like, oh, I'll go and look at that one. But no one told me that you couldn't buy one from the region and bring it into London. Well, you can with the LEVC. You can buy it from anywhere now, can't you? You can buy it from Scotland and bring it down to London or sell it to wherever. But you couldn't with the old TX4s and TX2s. You weren't allowed to move regions. Why not? I don't know. So any vehicle that you bring into London that is current, has to be current in London. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. if you if you went and tried to buy a Euro six and bring it in, you can't because you can't. it's not current in London. Yeah. It's I see. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 And that's how it used to be. Range. What's happening with the range? So the range is better. It was a different supplier of battery, which just gave us extra extra miles, which again people seem to be quite happy with, and you know, obviously saving a little bit more money. Um, the future, future range? Future? You don't know? Not sure. No, no. Or not selling? No, no, no. I don't know. I'm, uh, you know, I've I don't know. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. So what's the current range? It was just around a 70, wasn't it now? I would say in the good weather, you're just looking at 70. Some people talking about yeah. 80s. Yeah. So what, what's 80s this improvement? Are you, so you're talking about, what was the early batteries doing? 50s. And now we're doing 70s. Mm. So Originally it was supposed to be 80, but then when it came to real life, it was nowhere near that. It was more like 50. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then they got this swap over. What, in what are you saying, Dave? Go on. I'll say if you, it's an icy night, you'll be struggling to even get fifty. Like you'll be fifty one or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. I, icy yeah, night. Yeah. I'm talking about good weather. The cold effect in the life of the. To so be honest, with you, the, between the fifty does, and seventy yeah. is not going to. No, if it went to one fifty and the high, like the high, the range extender, then that would be good because you'd you know mm. that would yeah, be, be, be yeah yeah it'd be, it'd be good, it'd, that'd be good size. Yeah, I'd like to keep the engine, the range extender. I don't think I'd. Mm. You get a nice sense of security from that. Well, because you know, if you say so you had just imagine you had a, a five hundred mile range, mm. how long would that take to charge at home mm. on a trickle charge? Mm. Mm. Seven kilowatt battery. It could, it'd be twenty three hours. Seven yeah, kilowatts. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever four your days. battery charger is, is it per hour? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. seven kilowatts is what you get. I've at home. got a how friend who's got a car. He's doing eleven hours to yeah. charge. A, a, I think he's got three seventy range on yeah, a car, yeah, and yeah. I went eleven hours. Sometimes if he's going out early the next day, he has to stop off at a rapid charge, sit there for whatever time, and then go home and put it on the. And I went, yeah. I couldn't be messing with it. I know. So I just want to plug it in and go indoors. And this isn't is you? why the BMW i3 drivers like the original i3 because they the the new i3 only does what you just said, one fifty. Mm. So it's not good enough. Mm. Yeah, but see, 150 with an engine, no, like, like we've got. No, no, they, they had, you, you, you got, because you're carrying an engine and a battery. You, do you know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. you can only carry so much. You can't mm. carry. Three, you had you three carry times what I've got now. That would give me, it takes battery. about three hours to charge of a night. So yeah, yeah. That would be nine hours. I'd be indoors. So if you nine hours, get free, oh, that'd do me. Yeah, but it won't do everyone, will it? Why not? Because <laughs> some people live sixty miles out of town. Oh, well, you're, you're accommodating how far we live. I'm talking about for, for a working day. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. someone might live in Glasgow. I mean, you're getting travel yeah. to London. It's, it's, it's neither here nor there. You got to put some petrol in and save the electric till mm. he gets mm. to London, doesn't he? Yeah. This is the thing about what you said about having a range extender is a is a is a belt and braces. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do that, like that, it. That's what we've got now, and um, people seem happy with that setup. You ain't got to worry about anything. Range anxiety for yourselves, mm. for the passengers. They all know where they are with mm. it. They know that they can get in your cabin. They're going to get to where they need to get yeah. to go to. So, range has always been kind of, um, 
I've always kind of looked at it. How much are you saving a day, you know, compared to your diesel, your TX4? You're in the petrol station every day putting 30 quid in. Actually, this one's going to probably cost you 10, 12, 15 quid a day. So you're saving money every day on that. So it's um, it, it's trying not to get hung up on how many miles you can get, but it's how you drive it. How much can you get out of... How much time you can you, spend you, in it. You, you can get out of that vehicle yeah. as little as possible. And and, 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 and we've, we've achieved that. I think we've mm. we've done well with that and it's it's working. And, and having a comfortable ride and mm. a nice seat. What's the maximum size charger? So you've got a seven at home, haven't you? That's, that's what you're charging at. at home. 50 on the streets, 150. What, so if they go to 300, would that battery be able to take three, 400? No. No? Is there a limit to what it can you take? You can plug into a 300, but yeah. it'll only take 32 kilowatts an hour max. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure you can plug into them big old chargers. Not the 30. I think you can plug into the 150s, yeah. but you can still only take a certain amount of power per hour, which is the battery's 32 kilowatts now. It used to be 24. Mm. Seven, I think. I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to. It's thirty-two come kilowatts back to you on, battery. On if you can <coughs> plug into a one fifty charger, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can because they yeah. plugged into them ones in um, ha- under the Hammersmith flyover. There was a load down there, and they were using them for free for a bit, and so they were all plugging mm. in. But they were only getting so much charge per hour, so they was only you can only get the speed what they can do. They won't blow the cab up or anything like that. But yeah. Uh, so you might as well stick with a 50 then. Yeah, 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 same thing. Does the same job, does the same job per hour. So I'll see a video <laughs> with two cabs, two LEVs for the uh, Peninsula Hotel. Did you see the video all done up? Oh, yeah, beautiful. Clive Sutton. Yeah. Clive Sutton. Yeah. Sutton's lovely, yeah. So, yeah Tell we, us about them. Um, so, we, yeah, we sold the vehicles to the Peninsula. Um, we put them in touch with Clive Sutton and they kind of done their colours um, to match the rest of the fleet. Basically, and Clive Sutton do amazing job on amazing interiors. Incredible. And they really are. How much did that cost? Uh, though, that was beautiful. No, that I, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Tens of thousands. Um, what extra? I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. be able to tell you exactly how much that is. I, you know, I just put them direct in contact, and yeah. Yeah, they deal with it. Um, but they do, yeah. They just do an absolutely amazing job. They're very good at what they do. What's the future? What's the future for? It? LEVC. Where, where do we go from here? Where, where's, what's the next model? Any any plans? Or anything? Yeah. No? So at, at the moment, you know, I couldn't. I, I haven't got any information or anything that's coming anytime soon. You know, LEVC are obviously always looking and uh, see what they can do. Um, we need to make sure that obviously whatever whatever comes in the future is right for you guys. You know, there are other things that they look at. You know, MPVs and things like that. that they, you know, other other models that they can bring into the range. For LEVC, um, so that all of that sort of thing is kind of in the future. Um, but Geely are our, our parent company, investing heavily in, in you know uh, in uh, in this vehicle and for the future. So, yeah. what's your background before this? Have you always been in this industry? So I done my apprenticeship as a mechanic. Um, so I came straight out of school into college, working at a place where we sold vehicles as well. So I was selling Rovers. So, yeah, so I'd done my apprenticeship at a Rover dealership and there was a salesman there that basically said, look, I'm leaving, but I'm going to put you up to, to be a salesman because I think I think you'll do all right um, with it. So they tried me out um, on, a, on a Saturday and I just by fluke sold a car um, to somebody. It was pure fluke. Yeah. Um, but I sold a car and they said, right, don't bother coming in your overalls on Monday. <laughs> come back in your suit um that's it you ain't going back in the workshop yeah. so that's kind of where it all started never sold a car since yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's right one and only yeah. so did, you, did you finish your apprenticeship uh, okay. yeah i finished it oh, I, ac- I actually just finished it okay. um and i was kind of excited about getting a pay rise for being a fully fledged mechanic and i think it didn't quite happen because they they kind of put me into the the sales department and um yeah and i loved it a suit i had a new car the new car took a bit of time for me to for them to give me a new car but um a company car that is um you know so yeah that's that's kind of where it all started um so then I kind of thought right I'm gonna get my experience I'm gonna learn from everyone um and be a good salesman or try and be a good salesman so uh five years I stayed there uh and then I kind of moved on from there so uh, you know, went to an agency and they were kind of, um, you know, we've got Renault, we've 
you've got Ford, uh, and literally, I was just not imp- just just not interested. Really, it was boring. Uh, do I really want to go and sell Renaults? Mm-hmm. And no offense to anyone that does, it just weren't for me. Um, while I was selling Rovers, by the way, we kind of changed franchise and we started selling Subarus and things like that. So again, another niche kind of product that no one really knew about. And uh, there was only a you know I love the impressor. small audience. Right yeah, they were they were brilliant. So I was selling Impressors and Isuzu Troopers and things and like lovely that. Lovely motor then. Yeah. They they were they were brilliant. Yeah. They were brilliant. They really were good cars. Um so anyway, um went to an agency. I need to kind of, you know, work somewhere, earn some money, this, that and the other, and they're kind of talking about all these different makes and then someone said, uh, actually we've got a place uh, a taxi company and I didn't understand what they were talking about what do you mean taxi I, I, I don't get what you mean what someone actually sells them I've got pals where their dads are cab drivers so I've always been around cab drivers and seen the cabs but never actually thought where they came from mm. you know I just didn't understand it but uh, anyway that got that got me thinking and uh, pricked me ears up sort of thing and I thought yeah actually that sounds that sounds good I'm you know I'd like to go to the interview, went to the interview, different world, took the job. This was at KPM UK Taxis. So this was Mar- uh, uh, This was at 99 um, and I just loved it straight away. They gave me the job kind of there and then. Um, I started on the 1st of March 1999 yeah. and never looked back. Um, so yeah, for, for 25 years this year. You sold fairways even? Sold second hand fairways. Yeah. Yeah, so they were kind of um, phased out at that point. Ninety eight, I think the yeah so the TX or ninety seven, ninety eight crossover TX one came along, and back then that was wow. Well, like, was it ninety seven? They still had fairways up coming off the thing in ninety six, ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, and I think ninety eight was a crossover, so you had some that were ninety eight R Reg. Yeah, you remember the R Reg yes, fairways? That's right. yeah. yeah, then it was the TX one. Yeah, so I came in. At, uh, on the V Reg, T Reg, um, selling T Regs. That was my first. first How much was reg. a T Reg? Uh, T Reg. Yeah, they were about twenty eight, twenty nine, roughly. <laughs> um, you had three models: bronze, silver, gold. Yep. To me, that sounds like a lot. What? A lot of money in them days. Fairways. It, it, I, did, I, I didn't want it. It was too much for me. Was it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because you could buy a second-hand fairway for six, seven, eight, nine, and it would have a. There was no lifespan. You could have it for as long as you liked. Right. So there was no end of that. There was no age limit. Yeah. <laughs> so you just got it up, and everybody was looking after their cabs. Yeah. So you there would was buy an that. inspector that used to go. The, is this the, true? The, the, these um, to go out and check on cabs. Yeah. yeah, yeah stop no, they pretty much still. No, they used to go do, people in houses and all that. They yeah. Do. yeah They'd end up on your driveway. That's right. Under the cab. Yeah. And they'd put a little note through your door. Yeah, saying, stop note. Uh, stop note. Yeah, and you can't use it until you go back and get it all fixed up and get it represented. So it was really strict. You know, they Good. used to fail cap. Yeah, it was really strict. Yeah. So you know, you couldn't have a uh, rip in your seat, um, a little dent or Nothing. a scratch. You couldn't have anything. You know, so it was kind of really strict and. Mm. The standard was was lovely, and you know when I was taking in part exchanges, if someone said to me, "No, it's just come out of over," I'd be like, "Yeah, no problem. I don't even yeah, need be perfect, wouldn't it? I don't even need to look at it because yeah. I know it's absolutely bang on, and it was every time." I heard of cabs getting stopped uh, failing their overall because the rear brake light used to have the one that was against the rear windscreen. Mm. It's kind of flush against the windscreen, but inside there, it was it hadn't been cleaned. <laughs> it, it, there's a layer of dust. You'd be like, you need to get that dust out of there, kind of thing. It was the yeah. ridiculous the standards that they took them to. And people, the caps were great. Every year there was all the whole kingpins and all sorts of things from underneath Everything would have to be done. done. Yeah. It drove like a dream every year. Yeah. The standard now, what are they doing? I think they've they've um, raised it up again. They're, they're kind of, obviously, because you've got your MOT twice a year. Yeah. Um, and then your test once a year. So, and, and again, I think um, the cab isn't, doesn't need as much maintenance as it yeah. used to. So, um, you know, you were talking back then, Paul, um, and I'm not sure how long you, you've been driving a cab for or taking cabs up to Penton Street for testing and stuff, but you were looking at two grands 
I know, I heard. Yeah. Three yeah. grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you didn't look after your cab through throughout the year, you was in for a big bill. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... Yeah, it cost you more in the long run, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's so the same with these new cab, to be honest, because the panels are expensive, right? And if the, the inspector sees scratches, a certain amount of scratches, it, it gets knocked back. So you have to get... You have to have your bodywork in good condition. So <laughs> what's the highest mileage cab you've took in Park Exchange or you've seen that... Uh, like ever... Oh, do you know what? We were getting cabs in with um, half a million miles... Because they had no age limit, so these yeah. things were going and going and going and going. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, over, we, so over half over, a mil. Yeah, over so you've half seen a anything mil. With si- over six hundred. Um, potentially, yeah, potentially. <sighs> there, there was Same cabs engine? coming through. Not sure about the engine. Nah, nah. But you know, it, it, it was bulletproof. The yeah. engine was absolutely bulletproof. What, the Nissan. The Nissan was. Mm. was yeah, everyone a, says the was Nissan a really engine, engine was the best engine. But the problem is, as soon as you hit a slight incline, you know, I used to take them on the motorways, um, going up to Heathrow to see all the drivers at Heathrow. Uh, I used to go there every couple of weeks. But yeah, as soon as I hit a slight incline on the motorway, down yeah. to thirty miles an hour, mm. that was like that with the TX2. You know, so I came lot. in at TX2. Yeah, like, I had the transit engine, and that used mm. to struggle up hills. Well, the other problem you had with the fairway is if you went over sixty mile an hour, it was like the shuttle on re-entry into from space. It's like space things. All the front wings are going like this. The bonnet's going like this. <laughs> we used to rattle. We got. Oh, it's all like, chum, chum, chum. What was well, the cab that Patricia had? Can you remember? She, she had a. Um, I can't think what you called it. Uh, Asquith. 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 She had an Asquith. Yeah. They Asquith. weren't made, um, made by LEVC, was no, it? LTI, no, LTI. Sorry. No. They came and went by the time I started selling, but there was still a few out there. Yeah. So that was kind of like a kit car. Was it? Yeah. So it was made to look old. So the kit car oh, was... Oh, so it wasn't as old as it ma- was no, made to look? Oh, I didn't know no, that. No. Oh, you thought it was antique? No, it wasn't. I thought really. it was just, oh. like, made... The, I thought that was the age of it. What was shocking, though, is she said, I didn't know, because I, I did work with them. I did see people who had asked yes. when they were driving. But the, the, there was only 25? Right. Yeah, there wasn't many. Yeah. There wasn't many. And I've never seen one again. I've never, no, they're not now, now, are they? Obviously, they're off the road now. Yeah. But that's the thing of why they shouldn't be off the road now. You should be able to keep that. We're going on this idea of trying to be green, but mm. the idea of making something disposable, it, it, it's kind of the opposite of that. When, when you look at some of the cabs when they're at 15 years, and I'll get shot for saying this, but when you get to something like the Fairway or the TX ones twos and things when they were 15 years old they were ready to come off the road yeah mm. they were you know they were they were ready to come off the road there's only so much body work you can do there's so many <coughs> so many gearboxes and engines you know these things work really hard don't they and like you say they start to shake themselves i think there should be an extension for ones that have been really maintained well they should have they should be an extra test like you've really looked after that we'll give you another year well, the test but should the test should be it's fouled or it hasn't fouled. Yeah, if, it, if it goes mm. through and it's, its body work is still maintained, because there were fairways that but, were kept mm. mint. But we've got a responsibility to look after the company that looks after us. That's the way I see it. I, I'm going to get shot for saying that, oh, you know, mm. you're promoting EVC. No, we, we've got to, they've got to sell vehicles, otherwise they're not going to be here. No, if, you you keep, if you keep extending, 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 they're not going to sell vehicles and we're not going to have a trade. As simple as that. Yeah, I mean, also... Got to be sensible about this stuff. Y- you've got to keep up with... Uh, the emission, yeah. the, all the rules around all of that sort of thing. And obviously, you know, you want your <coughs> your passengers to jump in a, you know, a nice... Because nice yeah. they're up against executive clean, cars at the end of the day. Clean, maintained vehicle. Like True. So when do you think the last TXs are going to come off the road? What year oh, is that? Good question. Um, so uh, the last TX that we sold was a 67 plate 2017 i think it was december 2017 so 15 there was a limited edition weren't they so i limit, had limited yeah. edition We've limited edition special colors numbered all that sort of thing yeah i had number seven did you mm, yeah. 007 007 yeah okay i, I wish i kept it oh. really yeah 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 it was a good cap blue no, sorry, it was mid. What's the mid, black? Yeah, the, the special black. black. Oh, uh, starlight black. Starlight black. Lovely yeah. cab, that. Mm. Mm, wish I'd have kept it. So if that's 2017, let's put 15 on that. Is it 12 or 15? 15. 15. 15. So it's Euro 6. Okay. Eight years 16, isn't it? Say again. It'd be 16 years because you get an extra year, don't you? You don't get an extra year. So no. they've got rid of that part where they used to used to be at. Oh, a I think month there was before. a. I think there was a bit of a loophole that. Yeah, month before but you can I relicense think, it for an extra year. I don't think you can, but no? I, look, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Mm. So the uh, the oldest TX you can buy is 2017. 
Yeah, the newest. That would have that would the yeah. New, the yeah the newest yeah yeah and that would have an eight year plate left on it. Today it would have another eight years on it. Yeah. Um, and how much is the value of buying an eight year old TX? So look, they're going for you know twenty five. They're going for quite good money. Yeah, mm. twenty between twenty and twenty five maybe. Depending yeah, on the condition depending and on the condition and, stuff, and everything yeah, else. Yeah. But again, look, that's twenty five grand. Look, I'm not here to sell cabs. Believe it or not, twenty five grand on a TX four. I don't know. I would consider putting that down on a on a on a brand new vehicle mm-hmm. that you're going to get 15 years on. So it depends on what what you're doing. What's what's going on in your life? Yeah. You know, are you how long are you going to work for? You know, what what's your kind of plan going forward? So that might make you think uh, or decide actually I only want to work a few more years. I'll pay that money. I'll keep that and then I'll throw it away but, but that's kind of what we do is what we advise is you know how you, you know is it right for you you know do the per- payments work out for you um you know what i always do is however we buy this vehicle we're looking at the next one at the same time so whichever way you buy it you know today how's that going to affect the next one that, that you buy because really what you want to do is retain your equity in that vehicle Keep turning your money over rather than keep it 15 years and lose all your money on it. Unless you've been putting money aside, at the end of the 15 years, you're going to start again. So what can you do to kind of um, get a plan in place um, where you bring your payments down the next one, the next time? You're always in warranty. You've always got the latest vehicle um, and, and you're, you're, you're not killing yourself to pay for a cab. There's a tax benefit there as well, isn't there? Yeah. You know, you can, you can write all that tax off in three years. Yeah, but my plan would be I buy the cab over five years. I've then got 10 years of no paying for a cab. So when but then yeah, what but are you going to do on year 15? Yeah. Buy a new one. And what, what? Start again. Yeah. So you might be at that age then where you think, do you know what, I'm going to slow down. Oh, well, there is a, that question. But financially, surely I've had 10 years worth of free cab. That 10 years worth of free cab is a massive benefit. But, but it's not been free, really, you know, because obviously you're going to pay out for things that go wrong things are going to go wrong no matter what you buy that sort of age of vehicle mm. um you know tax ben- i'm not a tax advisor or anything like that so i can't advise on that but you know the tax benefits you're not getting no nope. every overhaul is potentially going <coughs> to cost you more and more every time more and more things are going to go wrong you lose the value of depreciates right the, the, the so value at of the, the end vehicle. of the 15 years it's not going to be worth anything much. but that's no. fine no but you dispose it but in in, in the 10 years you must be putting money away for your next cab or you start again on finance from zero deposit. If you're comfortable with that, that's fine. Or if you've got cash or you inherit some cash or you've something falls out of the sky, that's all right. But th- th- we're talking about everyone, not just, just us, are we, mm. I suppose. Depends on what, like, okay. say, like Lorenzo uh, says, it's just circumstances. Yeah, everyone's got different, different situations and we sit there, we'll go through it and, and kind of work it out between us. You know, to make sure that whatever you're doing today and the package that you're signing up for is right for you, and 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 that we you can get out of that vehicle in three, four, or five years, come out with some money to put down to the next one to hopefully bring your payments down. Okay, keep, I, I, I completely that makes sense. Does it? Is that yeah. mathematically you think that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I, I, I've worked people. Uh, I've worked with with guys, uh, cab drivers for a very long time. Um, and, you know, it, 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 for me, it's kind of, um, how can I get your payments down? How can I keep you in a new cab all the time? Or, you know, every three, four or five years and bring your payments down every time we do it. You, you know, and then the driver is kind of, you know, even if he is coming up to retirement mm. and he's still got a fairly new vehicle, do you know what? He's got some equity in that cab now that he can sell the cab and then he's got some money in his pocket to retire or towards his retirement. He should have gone to work. Then have money in his pocket when he's going to work. Are you seeing this sums adding up to you, Dave? It depends, I think, what age you are. That's the thing, it, I think yeah, you're getting it, at as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, if you get totally. to, say, late 60s, 70s, wherever, you might be thinking... Your last cab. But you could buy a second-hand one with a few years on it, couldn't you? And if you, you want to carry on a little, bit, little bit more. If you yeah. want to get, if you was I, I paid 5000 for a cab, 7000 for a cab, and 9000 for a cab, and that's my whole spending on cabs in 30 years. And then you did you did you do a bit of renting as well? Uh, I only rented the very, very first couple of weeks, yeah. and then I always owned. Yeah. Um, and then now I don't work particularly hard, so I haven't owned probably for 10 years. Mm. So for 20 years, 
I got away with that amount of money mm. in my fair ways. But you you say that, um, but then if you look at it and then top up what you spent on repairs and things like that, because at five, seven, and what was it? Five, seven and, and nine. And nine, you was buying something fairly old. Oh, yeah, yeah. And only a few years left on it. So, you, you know, you're going to so spend... Risk. You're going to spend money on maintenance. They had no well. lifespan um, limit when there I was all no my limits. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that came in yeah. afterwards. So yeah, that, that wouldn't work now. Not, not. It would work. You could do it. You, you've got to find it. It's hard to find. I still, I'm still, I'm still going to be of the mind. I want to pay for the cab. I want it to be owned. I don't want no money to be paid. And I will work the cab yeah. and get the money for it. The same as you would do a, a normal car and let the car, yeah. if it ages to the price to, to the value of zero, fine. Yeah. You buy a new one. And, but that, and that's absolutely fine to do that. No problem. Everyone's kind of got, you know, a different view on it. There's yeah. nothing wrong in, in that. No, no, but I'm also yeah. very open and, and like to understand the mathematics of it because yeah. if you've worked out an optimum way, because that's kind mm. of what you're saying, that the optimum mm. way to get the most out of this longevity, to pay the least over the long range of time and have the best vehicle, mm. you're saying keep chopping in and getting equity back in and paying less on the next one and so on. Exactly, yeah. So y you can keep... Um, yeah, you're basically just rolling your equity over into the next cab, into the next one, into the next one, and every time that equity is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? Mine's two and a half years old. I'll be three Sell years old in June. Pen. So oh. I was of a mind just to just to let it go, and that takes me to like them years. Takes me to like seventy years of age. Yeah. So, oh, so you've only or, got a year left. Eh? You've only got a year left. A year till I'm seventy. <laughs> <laughs> No, it will. I mean, another 12 years. I'm 58. Do yeah. I, I mean, how much more do I... I might never be alive in 12 years. You know what I mean? So, so look, the way, the way I see that is, um, again, is rolling your money over. Yeah, so mm. you... Do you mind me saying how you pay? To I pay cash. Right. So, you've paid cash, mm. right? You get to the end of that vehicle, that's it. That cash gone. Finished. Mm. No more. You've had, your, you've had your use out of it. You've earned mm. your money... Mm working it and everything else but if you look at it this way um and i'm not trying to sell you a cab <laughs> let's just say on year three you come to me and say i want to part exchange that vehicle you've got two years left on your warranty i can sell that vehicle as a second hand vehicle with another potentially another three year service uh, three years warranty on it that takes that vehicle i can sell that for five with five years warranty so I'm going to give you good money for that vehicle, right? Because I know I can sell it with a five-year warranty as well. Therefore, you use that money, you put it down on another one, and then you take your finance, or you might have cash again to, to clear it. You might only have to come up with 20, 50, and I say only, but yeah. 15, 20, 25, whatever it is. So then you're back into a new one. How about if I bought two? Put that down as a deposit on two? Hang on a second. Yeah, that's good for you. If I was to buy two new cabs. Yeah. So then you I, split the that, money. Yeah. Put that. And you. Just make it up. It's worth 40. Whatever. It's money talking like Let's say 40 anyway. Grand. Yeah. 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 Don't need any each. more fleets, mate. We don't need any more fleets. Don't start My all that. My son's doing an <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that's what I thought. I thought, I thought well, <laughs> if I was going to do something, I'd do it for him, wouldn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So you bought two. You split your deposit over the two of them. And then basically you do a HP over five years, maybe. You might want to do four years, three years. So this this is the point. You keep that cab right to the end and you might think, Joe, I have got one more cab before I retire. You've got to start again. You don't know how you're going to be, do you? At that you age. don't know. That's the thing. I don't know how I'm going to be. I might be fine. I might run around going, I want to carry on a little bit. Yeah, Let yeah. me say this I here as well. Uh, I would be thinking at three years, if you've bought it in cash, mm. you've ta you've done your tax, you've got your taxable out of the three years, they've, They've done it over three. They usually do it over three years. You get your tax um, benefit over three years. So if you go again, you get that again. See what I mean? Mm. You get the tax. Oh, you, don't you, worry. You yeah, get your right I'll, down I'll, again. I want it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Get, you get your right down again. I ain't giving up anything. Yeah, yeah. No, but it just you made me right think. I again. hadn't thought. I hadn't thought yeah. before about getting two. Yeah, yeah. Until so, that. Yeah. So, so there is that option. You could sell that part, exchange that cab, buy a new one on three years, for example, and pull the money out completely. I've never rented a cab on the podcast, but he's sold two to you. I have toyed with the idea of how long will I carry on for? Will I still be alive in when I'm 70? Mm. I don't know. Well, you know mm. But with James doing the knowledge. Yeah. Um, I how don't far know. is he, he on it? He's only on book three. He'll be out in a year and a half. You know, yeah. 
He could be out in a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say he was brilliant and got out in 18 months, two years' time or something like that. But then I could I could flop that in and say I'll have two. Yeah. Four yeah. years old or something like so, that. So, and that's what I'm saying. Everyone is, um, everyone's got a different situation. Um, what I try to do and advise is, like I, like I said earlier, what we do today and how you buy your cab today, we need to be looking at how that affects the next one. And like I say, you've paid cash. Mm. Three years time, chop it in, go again, take the equity out, put it onto the new cab, split it, buy two, one for you and your son. You can either clear it, because at the moment you're not paying anything, yeah? Nothing, no, 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 no not So penny. really... I paid it up front, bang. Yeah, put money away every week now, if you haven't already, but put the money away. So when you do come in three years time and say, right, I'm ready to go again, you can pay it off, done, again, put the money aside. You're always going to be paying. So you put that money aside and you just keep that money rolling. If you ever did need to take the finance the next time round, to be honest, if let's just say you had 40 grand to put down, then I'd be saying to you, let's look at two years payments. Let's Can you handle the two years at whatever it is? Okay, two and a half. Let's look at three. You know, and then you're paid off again in three or two and a half even. Mm. You know, so you're in a really good situation where... You've been fortunate enough to pay cash. Yeah, very fortunate. Keep that money rolling over. Yeah. And that's not me trying to sell cabs. It is, but it makes sense, no? Yeah, it does. To, to, to this is the thing. Like, I, I When I see people talking about this on social media, saying like, you know, oh, I'm free old, I want to stay free old forever. There's no such thing. You have to always plan ahead. It's a business that you've got to plan ahead for. It is a business. You can't wait till the vehicle's got nothing left on it and then go, oh, I've got no deposit and it's going to cost me. And that's just bad bit. planning. That's Paul. just bad planning. You've got to think about what's going forward. Like, oh, the interest rate's 12%. Well, at the moment, yeah. You don't want to be borrowing money right now. No, so, but, but in, in terms of tax, do, do you not get money back on the interest rate? Yeah, uh, it's all taxable, I suppose. Right, yeah. But yeah, it's all taxable. But, you yeah. don't, you know, it's cash flow as well. You've got to think of your cash flow. Mm. You know, you're a one-man band. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's difficult. Yeah, out there, mm -hmm. I understand. Um, and, you know, so if you don't plan for the future and your cab's breaking down, it's out of warranty and you're chucking money at repairs and you haven't got any money for the deposit on the next one, you've got to start your business all over again. We're not all as fortunate as yourself, unfortunately. You know, so yeah, we've but got I'm to old. start. You're old. Yeah, I'm unfortunate. But there's a lot of <laughs> yeah. old of cab drivers out there that have had to start again. There is. I've done it for so many years where I'm sitting in front of someone. It doesn't matter whether you've got the cash or not, to be honest. Don't lose that money is what I'm saying to you. Yeah. You know, but there are people there that ask, they start from scratch. So then we look at how they're paying for it. And, and it's all about timing, mm. when to change, when to chop it in and yeah. go again. Mm. So it, it, it may take someone three cabs to get to the position that you're in now, for example, or mm. four cabs. But it's doable. Time flies. You've had just mm. two and a half years already. Mm. Um, three that, years in that, June, yeah. That's fl flown by, probably, mm. for you. Mm. It flies by for me. And before you know it, it's done and you're you're on to the next one. I'm on a WhatsApp group with a load of TXC owners. We sort of split away from another group when we first got the cabs. And a lot of them now are on their third TXE. Mm. And they're near enough free old from yeah. starting from low deposit, like five grand. Yeah. They're near enough. You, you know, you'll know some of them. They've changing it their third one now. So they've gone six years. So they're on their third. They've done. Yeah. They're on their third one. And like I said, the, they're not cash like completely, but so they're low. I'm sorry, but something's confusing me. So you're saying they're near enough free old. Yeah. I, I buy a cab and I pay it off in five years. I am free old. So why would I be, why would I be near on enough? The and third. Then I'll, be, I'll be on the first. I'll pay the five years. Because they've chopped in at three rather than five. They just keep chopping in to get this new cab, right? But yeah, again, it's a, it's a work vehicle. I'm going to work it. Uh, I, I do think maybe there are different thing. characters. Mm. I don't think it's too different, Paul, but there's different characters of, of people that are financially completely and utterly useless. I did have a friend who was a cab driver when we first passed out. He did go and get the brand new cab, whereas I went and bought um, a five grand Metro second mm. hand. Mm. He went and bought the financed brand new Fairway. I think they were about 23 or 24. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he got his wife a, a RAV4, I think it was at the time, on <laughs> HP, because he had got a job all of a sudden that he could afford. He ended up needing to earn £2,000 a week, I think it was, to cover the outgoings of the things that he purchased. It's just irresponsible, though. It is, but see, I'm not that kind of person, and I'd pay my cab off, yeah. and then the, the money that I'm getting in, I never spend money I haven't got. 
And I also like to have money put away. So I probably would have, uh, I'd expect to have about 50 grand saved up by the end of the 10 years. Everyone was paying for things in a different way. There was a different way of, of your customers paying you. So now you've, you're running everything in a different way. And it's of buying cabs, PCP, yeah. HP. You know, you've got this balloon payment at the end now so that you mm-hmm. can afford the payments to be a bit lower during the time so that it stretches it out. So you've got to do more than one cab to, to be freehold now. And that's mm-hmm. the guys that are doing it from day one, mm-hmm. from the 67 plate. They've been sharp. They've been clever. They've, they've I don't chopped think so. Early. They've been sold. Lorenzo sold it. They, <laughs> because I'll tell you why. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't completely understand the plan and I consider myself to have a little bit of a mathematical brain. So yeah. I don't completely, but I understand that you've, you've probably it's thought complex. about it and laid it down much more than I have. But the people you're selling it to, they've got no clue. They've just took your word for it and thought, yeah, that makes no, sense. No, because it's, it's actually, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, I just And told these guys are coming no back three, down. four, five cabs yeah. and, and they're, they've taken the advice and they see the, the benefit of having a new cab all the time. Okay, give me So the what you're doing, uh, what you've done in the past ain't wrong. Don't get me ain't wrong. wrong. It ain't wrong. That suited you, and you're happy with that. So that's the main thing, is that you're happy with it. There isn't a, probably a moment where you think, I wish I'd bought new cabs. You're not. You're no. absolutely, I can tell, happy that you've bought old, older cabs. You sell you're bangers, you? You're going to sell bangers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you're, you, the, 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 the beautiful, beautiful thing about the way you've done it is you're getting the same fare as Dave. Well, this Even is though what, Dave's got a new yeah, cab, you've that's got the, the, point. the same money, and I'm, and I'm chugging along. The point is, how much right. can... How can you pay the least over the, the amount of time? Who's paying? Whose income is the greatest is the whole issue. Who's got the least outgoings and the most incomings? So is it the guy who's doing your method or is it the guy that was doing my method? I, I think there ain't much in it, if I'm honest. No. I don't think there's much in it because you've bought... Oh, you, you're... An exception? You, you are a little bit. Three cabs in 30 years. Um, don't go to work does it? I don't go to work now but I was a real real hard worker I would do 16 hour shifts easily the guy I bought my cab off was Peter was Mm. here Peter Maynard Uh, I gave him for that particular cab you have to ask him I think that was the £7,000 cab Um, that was H160YUL fairway H1 so he took the the cash from that and he went straight and he bought his first TX1 Mm. with that cash Mm. and for some reason he thought £7,000 was a lot of cash I don't think it's not much cash but I he went into, uh, did he go into KPMs and buy it? I think it's in the podcast. May, to see. Peter may not. Rings a bell to me. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Rings a bell. I don't understand why you've not sold more Vistas, the normal, without the sunroof, without the electric seat, because before we had the TX4, and now everyone like was renting these nicer cabs with the sunroof and everything else. Like It's an extra five or six grand. You could save off the price of the cab. What, with that sunroof? No, it's not, sunroof? it's not as much as that. Is it not as much not as that? Not as much as that, no. So when you're looking at it and you break it down weekly, you could be looking seven, eight to ten pound extra per week for, right. all, for everything. For everything. And yeah. then that vehicle well, is go. worth more at the other more end as well. End. You're yeah. paying more for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah But you know yeah, what? Yeah. You're going to get more for it. No, the I, other get end. I get that. I get that. And got, then when I'll someone go. comes in and buys a second hand cab, the first thing they want is top of the range. Yeah. They're not interested in the bottom of the range. I know. Yeah. If, I'm go, if I'm going to sit in something, I did this, this chair, for instance. Yeah. I, I want a comfortable. I want. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, want, I want that. I want that. I do because yeah, you're, you're going out for ten hours or twelve, yeah. whatever it is. You, you want to sit in something comfortable? Yeah, why not? You wouldn't. You'd sit on a crate. No, I wouldn't. No, <laughs> no, no, no. There's Sleep a few one. things that I'm thinking. Dave, I have my my bed at home is super expensive. There's a few things that have to be chairs that you sit in in a car. I, I even in my old uh, thingy, I bought the chair from Buckingham's. It would have been about four hundred oh, yeah. quid. So yeah. I would have bought the, the bits for you that are part of that, Dave. I'm in for. Like well, the cab I like, itself. <laughs> <laughs> I like a nice seat in the cab, and I like to rent my cabs with nice leather in them. Well, I'm shocked. They I don't know. Good. Nowadays, Smell maybe good. we don't need them, but I was shocked that in the olden days on the fairway that we didn't have the suspension chair mm. with the air suspension yeah. on it mm. because yeah. we were sitting in it so long that you yeah. wanted to be as comfortable as possible, but it never seemed to, no one had it. There, there was, uh, you could buy them, couldn't you? I think you could buy the suspension bases, yeah, and put it in, and put it in, and then the overall would say take it out. No, I think it was all past. Um, I'm just trying to think if I ever saw them in fairways, but they were definitely in TX ones. The suspension bases that it might not have been made it in a fairway, might not fit. Yeah, I'm not sure. Can't can't really because it was a different seat when it as well. Actually, the chair I had that was the best one was nothing like a modern chair. It was I think it was called the Putman Putman seat. Yeah, Yeah, and it was just like a Recaro. No, you no, had the Recaro. No, no, Putnam. Putnam is different. Isn't okay, Recaro yeah. was the one that would fit you like a racing car. Yeah, it was. Uh, the, the, the Putnam horrible. was a was a flat bench and yeah. a flat back, 
but there was about this much springs, like a bed yeah. springs. So you were sitting on a very spongy, springy seat. And then when you got the uh, new TXs, the, the seat in that was like a wafer thin piece of <laughs> wood. TX was, yeah, it, w- it was literally a, a piece of metal uh, with foam around it and then the cloth. But again, that was trying to uh, give you more space mm-hmm. in, in the cabin. Because the, the guys that, were big. Yeah, that was probably more the, the kind of reasoning behind it was trying to maximise. Yeah. The what, jump to, you know. from TX4 to this cab is mental, like mm-hmm. the difference. I feel like we've gone from 1999 to 2023. Oh, well, this, this, the fairway was dated back into the 60s. I yeah. Mean, it was, it was yeah. Literally They're miles yeah. behind with it, yeah. miles behind. And you've, we've come into it being like a car now. You used to burn your leg. The, your leg here would be against the gearbox. <laughs> yeah. And you, it would, you'd get yeah, red, I mean, I'm, red sh- I'm short, as everyone leg. knows, uh, and as everyone points out that I'm short, and I would struggle to get in the TX4 without my left leg bent. Yeah, well, well, me and you, I mean, I'm about... I'm four foot three. I'm about five yeah. inches taller than you. Yeah. <laughs> but when I used to get in the fairway, the roof... The wi- I was higher, th- yeah. my forehead was higher than the screen, top mm. of the screen. But yeah, you would always see people in fairways, kind of, at the yeah. lights. Yeah, big guys. At the, uh, mm. You'd be through the sunroof, Dave, you'd be like that. Yeah, yeah, that's all you, Dave. Six, yeah, six Circus yeah. bear. <laughs> I'd just like rip the seat out. What was his name? It. In Police Academy? <laughs> what was <laughs> Tower? High Tower. High Tower. But this was it in the fairways. I mean, look, I, I was selling... Rovers and working on rovers and things yeah. like that. And uh, yeah, when I when I joined KPM um, and jumped in the fairway, I couldn't believe the switches were all from the Maestro yeah. and Allegro, and I couldn't I couldn't get my head round, you know, all, all of them sort of quirky things in the in the trade. Yeah, you know, which is it was not a technological advancement, was it? It was really pieces of Lego stuck together. But I liked it. I yeah, drove like a dra- drove like good. a go kart. They were still good. Well, we didn't manage to get to the complete bottom of the finances. I mean, I'm, I'm, my head's spinning on the numbers. I don't I'm think still you're meant to. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. I don't think that's you're meant to. That's not true. That's, that's, gonna be, that's gonna be the thumb now, I'm afraid, yeah. Lorenzo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the cups. I, I think that's why people get going back. They go back to no. look at something else. They might go back for a service and they will back out of a new cab. <laughs> I took it in for some air in the tyres. All I can <laughs> say is that, you know, uh, we'll always take the time to... To, to go through stuff we're not we're not uh trying to you know force people into cabs or anything like that you know i've always been a strong believer of sitting with people going through you know what's yep. good for you is it right for you does it work for you if it doesn't you know there's been so times where we Lorenzo. do say to people you know it, it ain't right the figures are not working out come back okay so put your cards on the table right we had to do the podcast didn't we buy or sell or uh, buy or rent so buy or rent then um, I Financially, what do you think is the one that's going to give you the most income? That's all that matters. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure I want to answer it. <laughs> because... Here comes the cups again. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, no, no, I've never look, minded this I, question. I, no, no, look, do you know what? And, and, uh, and kind of, look, for me, is everyone is different. And I can't say um, that, that buying is, is best for you. Uh, or renting's best for you. It, it, it really is down to the individual, and I couldn't say either way. You know, you, you might you come in and I and and you end up saying, "Listen, oh, I feel happy at renting." Do you know what rent? I, I think know, that, that you're, you're talking that. about um, happiness, but we're talking about simple, basic mathematics. Which one brings no. you out with the most income? Is it buying or renting? I'm not going to answer it. I think it does. It's it's, 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 can I answer? It suits different people, doesn't it? Can I answer? Suits different people. When you, when you first get your badge, yeah. I believe you should rent to start with because yeah. you don't know how you're going to be in the job. You don't know how... Uh, it's how always you, better to smash up your cab than smash up my smash own cab. Up. But you might not even like it. Mm-hmm. You may not like the job. You may not. You, this is what I'm saying, saying Dave. And you, you might just not signed like up below the finance and go, uh, I can't stand this. Yeah, mm. I think I've only ever come across one guy that's, or well, a couple that have said, I can't stand the job, can't bear it. It's not that After so After spending all that time... It's not, it's, I, I wasn't really alluding to that. What I was alluding to is... Um, you're going into finance early, like because a lot of people haven't got the cash, Dave. You know, going yeah. into finance early, then you think, oh, do you know what? I, I, I want to have a break, three months, because it's a flexible job. You can't be flexible if you've got finance. You can't just give it back. You know, in the first year after that, when you've got your feet under the table, you know, you might have had a, your first little accident. You know, setting someone down or someone mm-hmm. might have swung the door. All that kind of stuff you can get used to. I had a driver that went to look at finance from early. 
finance, £1,400 a month for finance because you had no deposit. So that's more than renting because once you're adding insurance or your other associated costs, mm-hmm. it's more expensive than renting. Had he had a deposit, put 20 grand yeah, in. Yeah, I can better. see that. He can work week to week. But better. You know. I've got a question for you. Cool. Your insurance, are you a fleet owner? Mm. If someone's 70... Is it dear? Is it harder to get them insured, or eighty, or over seventy five? Yes, over seventy five. Yes, we got trouble there because it's a similar thing to a young driver. Mm -hmm. It's it's more risk. Rental companies don't rent uh, private uh, like a Hertz and uh, Avis. They won't rent to you over seventy five. No, same with us. We we can we can we can. I had a guy who was eighty one who drove a TXE. Yeah, I was going to say it's not always been the case, is it? Uh, it We had to retire him sadly. Mm. Yeah, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You had him put down. (laughs) <laughs> Such a lovely fella, um, but he had a couple of accidents. Him. <laughs> yeah, we miss yeah. him. Yeah. No, he had a couple of accidents, and he couldn't go on, unfortunately. No, I d- yeah, I do think that yeah. does happen with some old people. Don't you? you have to see in the car parks where they shoot shoot across the car park because yeah, they yeah. mix up. They just must mix, mix up the accelerator and the brake. Or it's whatever. coming, Dave. It's coming. Yeah, but no, I, I did, they, we knew there was an age when we spoke before about insurance. Yeah. We knew there was an age thing. Yeah, it becomes the same risk as a seventeen-year-old. So at seventy-four, right. you're fine. You know right. what I mean? It's a similar kind of risk. That's how they, right. that's how they assess it. At seventy-four, yeah. you're fine. Seventy-four, you're. So right. There's another reason I'm, I'm saying that now. Being a pretty selfish thing and not me, boy. If Mark Mark have goes to I'm seventy, I might as well rent for a few years. What, yeah. what, what am I financing up for? You know what I mean? Yeah. And Hang on, we've talked you in and out. <laughs> yeah. I bought two uh, cabs. Now I've rented one to rent. <laughs> <laughs> I bought two and rented one. But you can see I'll though, buy your cabs and you rent them back off me. <laughs> but you can drive yourself mad trying to decide which is the best, yeah. best way. You got to just do it at the time. You got what's to, right for yeah, you at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, but are you going to rent me a cab at eighty one? No. So you won't <laughs> rent to someone over seventy five. I will. I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I can well, do it. it costs more. It. Like, would it cost more? Not necessarily. More? No, it just depends. Depends. Should Everyone's they, different. Declare the age to. Yeah, I make. We have to make a, a commercial decision. Yeah, to see if we feel like we're comfortable with it. And so it's it. your decision. It. Not. Yeah, it's not really decision. the insurance. So you're just no. being whether you want to be nasty. Insurance will. No. <laughs> the insurance will put an extra excess on to that driver mm. um, as risk. Um, much? How much? This guy that we had, we his excess was fifteen hundred quid, mm. it, which was the same as a driver under twenty five. It's the same yeah. risk. They and, it's the same risk. And was someone forty years old? What's normal, their excess? Normal excess. What's normal? A thousand. Well, excess the, what, is higher now because the, the the vehicle and the risks are higher. No, I just don't think it's as bad as I, I was led to believe. I thought it was no. really difficult to get, there, or virtually you know, impossible. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think right. they're, 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 they're out there. You know, we've just sold a cab to, to an older guy and, um, yeah, no problem. He had, well, he had to move from one insurance company to another. God, I bet it wasn't even a cab driver, just someone walking past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got a cup He out. saw you in the cups. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing. <laughs> Everyone's got their experience of Brewery Road, haven't mm. they? Like, yeah. you know, positive, negative, mm. you know. <clears throat> How has it changed over the years? Because you've been there 25 years. How is it um, now? Because when I first started... Hold on, that's a bit confusing. But you was KPM's, which no, is basically no. the competition. Yeah, I was KPM. Yeah. I was KPM for eight years or so. I started at uh, Brewery Road uh, when they first moved in. So so they moved in, in in Brewery Road from Holloway Road, October 2006. So I joined January 2006. So, um, so I left KPM... Uh, and kind of went to, to M&O's is what it was known for back then. People still call it that. Yes, People M&O. still call it call it that now, yeah. So funny. So, um, but less and less o- over the years, less and less. So, so yeah, no, I, I haven't heard it for a while. Yeah. Like, man, no, I haven't seen it. So, so I was in the, uh, so I was a salesman, basically. Um, you know, I had a lot of kind of customers that I dealt with from, from KPM. Um, so I built up a very good kind of customer base. Um, and and thankfully and luckily for me, you know, guys followed me from there to here, uh, from there to, to, to um, Brewery Road. Um, so, you know, obviously I started uh, dealing with fleets. I've been dealing with fleets from uh, uh, KPM. But, um, I, I stopped selling retail vehicles in 2011 or 12. Um, and then I became sales manager. Um, and then... Uh, last year, November, I took over the whole building. So, so basically, now I look after all of Brewery Road, um, and look after uh, you know the sales, service, and parts. So, my biggest thing has always been is obviously customer service, and I know that we've had 
issues over the years and a bad reputation over the years. Um, and it, but it's always been my number one to try and kind of make sure that people are being dealt with properly, you mm-hmm. know, and, and looked after. And we make mistakes. We're, you know, we're only human. We are going to make mistakes. Um, but my biggest focus is kind of um, stripping back the service, which, you know, we have done. We've got a great sales manager there, uh, sorry, service manager there now, Shane, who's kind of, you know, we've stripped it back down. He's kind of worked really hard to kind of um, change the way we do things, make it better uh, for, for after sales side of it to, you know, um, and, and get people in and out as quickly as possible. So, you know, there's there's a lot of work that's gone on um, in the background to, to kind of make things better, to try and, you know, we we have had a poor reputation in the past for after sales. Yeah. And I've just got to say, you know, that it's, you know, it, it, it's a lot, lot better than what it was. We're not 100% there yet, but that's my biggest focus is just yeah. trying and making sure that we're looking after customers. So, you look, we've come a long way. I know, Paul, you use us um, quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I like to yeah. think that we, we, you know, we try and do our best for people. We're not going to get it right every time. We're still working hard to make it uh, better, you know, but that's my number one. I just want people to know that yep. that's, my, that's my number one is to, to, to make these changes for the better for everyone. And yeah. My thing about Brewery Road and any service centre that you go to with a taxi is waiting time. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the most important thing that mm-hmm. you need to treat with a cab driver. Cab driver sitting in your waiting room is a cab driver losing money. That's how they see yeah, it. But I don't mind if they tell me. If they just say to me, "This yes. is going to be a while, go yeah. home." Or whatever. Yeah. I don't think they'll give me a cab. I'll, I'll, I'll get home. I'll get. You know, well, I think don't, don't leave me sitting here. I yeah, think that's yeah, the exactly. most like important. Five hours thing. later, I could have gone off anywhere. Could I done anything? Yeah, I'll yeah. come back in the morning. Exactly. It's a commercial vehicle. It's not a car. It's yeah. a commercial yeah. vehicle, and that means that if I'm if I'm running a, a, a service centre, I'm going to either give you a loan cab if I can, or I'm going to say to you, "Right, this is going to be four hours." There's no point you sitting here unless you want to sit here mm. Um, mm. or your fleet or whatever. So you need to know. And that is what their focus is more of now. I, I feel like that their yeah. walk, the communication is, is a, is, has improved. Yeah, uh, It's not perfect. I'm not, gonna, I'm not sitting here promoting LEVC. No, it's no. not perfect. I've had murders about it over the years. Mm. Um, but it has got better. Look, you know, we want to get you back on the road. We yeah. don't want you sitting there. No. You know, the guys at the service end, I've got to say, they... You know, they're going to get the rough end of the Mm. stick because, you know, people are breaking down or there's a problem with a vehicle and, you know, they want to get back on the road and earn money and everything else. And I understand all that. And the guys there get a battering. They do. Genuinely, they get, you know... You know they get get the raw end. Yeah, rightly so. But, you know, they're they're human. Yeah. um, And um, they will try and do their best for you. But I get it, you know, look, sometimes you might be the fifth person to have a go at them. Lorenzo, it's not yeah. a very good business strategy for anybody to not be giving, wanting to be the best at who they are. Yeah. So you want to be the best in the business. You obviously, I can tell from your character, You, if you're doing this, you're not doing it to rip people off. If you can no. give away cabs for free and it would make the cab company look great, you'd do that. It's just basically you've got to do and want to do whatever it is to make you the best at your business, the best in your industry Correct. and to aspire to that. And it's obvious yeah. that you do that. It's not yeah. an easy task. And we're all very, very quickly we can really condemn people quite quickly for yeah. ulterior motives and whatever it is. But yeah. your job is to sell cabs. Um, we concluded yesterday that it really should be a singular market. I mean, it's a, it, whether we like it or not, it's a monopoly market and we should just accept that rather than trying to have competition because it mm. seems that it's very difficult to have competition in a very small niche market that you dilute it. And every piece of competition that's come along since you've been here mm. has basically been the people like, oh, yeah, it's going to bring the price down. But no one wants to buy the competition. So the competition doesn't survive very long. And then it's back to you again. And yeah, you can't yeah. compete. And, and, and that's the thing is that it is a really small market. Yes. Um, and for anyone to invest, we've invested, uh, or LEVC, uh, have inve- or Geely have invested millions absolute mm. millions to bring a vehicle to market um that complies with tfl we've spent millions yeah. it, it, you know you can't just turn up with a van convert it and and make it work you know because it, it, it's a small market yeah you know uh, really small markets <laughs> is it i think that might be it because yeah, uh, there's on. a lot of hard work going on thank you lorenzo no no problem you've, you've, you. you've basically spilled the beans on about nothing and uh, <laughs> yeah. we now Fully understand nothing. 